Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have recommended me in the comment section of one of my videos. And if we just see something of yours shown on this channel, just leave me the name of the workshop item in the comment section below and I'll eventually get round to it. But for today we are looking at another design which I believe is from Xbox. This is a GBH dropship which has a working vanilla vector thrust system because it uses no scripts and no mods. So here it is right here and here are the lovely thruster pods on the side. The front two are static and will not move but the ones at the very back will utilize a hinge and a merge block in order to change positions and allow you to boost yourself forwards with all of those atmospheric thrusters. But look at that a bit later. Come all the way up to here and then press F10, finding it in the spawn menu. This thing says it is 14,439 small blocks, but it's actually more closer to 7,000 when you spawn it in. It uses the Sparks of the Future, Wasteland and Heavy Industry DLC packs to give it that great look. And like I said, it uses no mods and no scripts. We can also see a nice lot of information about it on the workshop page. So we'll simply give this a thumbs up and move all the way around to the very front. Have a quick look around the outside. Have a quick look of the interior and then we'll test it out to see how that vector thrust system is working. So all the way over to here at the very front, this is what we get. Front and center we can see two Gatling guns to manually blast our enemies with. Just above that we've got a lovely fighter cockpit which has been surrounded by a bunch of steel blocks to give it that nice bulky dropship look. We can see on the left and right hand side of our fighter cockpit two spot lights to light up a darkness the ladder on one side to help you get into the cockpit without a jetpack. Coming all the way down over to here, we've got a beacon to make sure we can always find this thing. And right below that, we've got the first galling turret that appears on this ship. If we were to pull away from that and start to move around the side, this is what we get. So here are the first of many atmospheric thrusters that appear on this ship with a lone ore detector so you can use this to scout out ore patches. Right next to that ore detector, we've got a cargo container for you to manually load stuff into the ship if you need to, and that cargo container is pretty much connected up to everything else in the ship. If we were to move along the side of the main body, we'll come to the wings in just a minute. We've got some nice use file letter blocks spelling out GBH. And coming along over to here, this is the interior of our dropship where your passengers will be sitting in one of those chairs until it gets to a combat zone or to where you're going, where they can just hop out of the back where there's a handy little ramp. Yeah, so let's just continue along all the way along towards the back there and there's a ramp where they'll get in and out. All the way around over to here, we've got a handy button on the side to open and close that from the, on the ground and that is where they'll go. So if you were to come all the way inside this then we'll return back to the thruster pods. We've got a ladder to head up and higher up into this section, a bunch of seats along the side for your people to sit in, O2 H2 generators on the ceiling. If I put my light on inside here we can see some great use of our barred window blocks. Coming towards the back here, some more O2H2 generators, a survival kit, and another little seat right over there. So that seat can be for your medic to sit on and monitor who's using the survival kit. Turning around and facing towards the back, this is the section that goes up onto that ladder. We've got ourselves a cargo container and two cryopods, just in case you needed. Coming out of there and coming around over to the first thruster pod, this is what we get. So there's a bunch more steel blocks and a bunch more amateur thrusters. Inside here we've got a bunch of large ones to keep us off the ground and a couple of small ones. On the side right at the top we've got a merge block for you to do whatever with. And coming all the way down and underneath we have a piston system which is for our landing legs. We do have some magnetic plates underneath the main body but this is just to simply stabilize it in case you need it. We can also see over onto the section which connects it to the main body of the ship another gang turret for some more defense. Then coming up over to this section right here, even more atmospheric thrusters, a rocket launcher and two wasteland spotlights to light up the darkness a bit more. Another galling turret on top. We were to come up and look down at our thruster pods. There are all the large atmospheric thrusters. And we shove the camera straight through here. All the way down. There's some more small ones to help on our left and right. Now come all the way down over to here. We'll be able to see the start of our piston right there. We had to pull away from that and continue around over to this section right here. We've got some nice far blast or edge blocks acting as a little bit of decoration at the back right there. There's some more atmospheric thrusters sitting at the back. 
and then we come all the way over to this. So it looks very similar to the one at the front right there, except this one can fold forwards thanks to a hinge. So it's basically set up the same with a mudge rock on top, a couple more abstract thrusters on the left and right, and as per usual, we've got ourselves a landing gear at the bottom. If we were to move all around towards the back, this is a system that will allow it to fold all the way up and utilize a vanilla only vector thrust system. So once we hit a button, a time block will start up, it'll detach a merge block which is just holding it in place currently, and we'll move the hinge all the way up until these two merge blocks right here will connect and lock themselves in place. This will allow you to utilize the thrusters because it will think is a singular grid. Unlike if you were to simply just slap it on a thrust onto a rotor, that would not function because it counts as a separate grid unless you were using, say, the vector thrust script. So if we were to bring the camera all the way down, we'll be able to see where the merge block is connecting right there. And yes, we'll just come around to the opposite side and it's going to be the exact same setup. So coming all the way over to here, we can see some good use of our suspension blocks, adding us a bit more decorative features connecting onto our thrusters onto the side. Some more great use of our steel blocks, just adding us some more decorative touches right there. Let's come all the way around to the opposite side. You'll be able to see the merge block at the top on this side. As for the opposite side, it's going to be the same as what we just saw. So there's a turret on the top and the bottom there, our thrusters on the back. And here is our thruster pod at the front. So if we were to move all the way up and above here and start to look down, there is a finder cockpit. If we were to move along the main body, we'll see an antenna on the opposite side. And all the way over here, even more great block work. There is a turret on top. There's a couple of parachute hatches just in case you need it. Then moving towards the back of this vehicle, some more parachute hatches with some more use of the barred window blocks. And towards the back there, even more parachute hatches, so you know you're going to survive if your thrusters get taken offline. And there we go, there's the thrusters at the very back. If we were to drop down and come underneath, there are the merge blocks connecting the back up together. Over to here, we've got ourselves a cargo lift, which is a piston with a magnetic plate attached onto it, which we can float all the way down, connect onto something, then lift it up, then carry it along with us on our journey. Just a handy little thing of just carrying around a cargo container in case you need to carry some more ammunition, some more fuel, or whatever. We can also see some more buttons which are going to be for the cargo lift over there, and the button right over this section which is going to be for the ramp to open and close it. If we were to continue along underneath this thing, there's our magnetic plates for us to land down on. There's the bottom of the main body. Towards the front, there's our turret, there's our ladder on that side, and there's the two galley guns at the very front. And that is a very brief look around the outside of the GBH dropship, and it does look fantastic, has all been set up. But now what we can do is just grab hold of my character, we'll quickly hop into this, over here, there we go, we now put the power back on, and I'll make our way around towards the back. I turned off the power because it's a little draining on the performance, having this many pistons in one area. Yes, we can come around to here, our lights now turned on, we've got our two buttons up here, we can press this, which is going to be for our cargo piston, where it comes all the way down to the ground, and yes, you can just connect up to a car container if you need to. So we'll go and press that once again. That'll just lift all the way up. The other one is for our magnetic plate, which is going to be for that right there. So say if we were to say, bring in a small cargo container. So here we go. If we just go and drop this like so, that should be in a good enough place. We now activate that. That'll come all the way down. Then we can activate that. And we should be able to lift up the steel block all the way up. And now we can carry it along on our journey. Once we're done, we can simply just drop that off. And of course, if you want to be really sneaky with this, you can always just grab a warhead and, well, hopefully it won't get shot down. But we can now just come and very carefully move this around like so. Hopefully it won't roll around and now we can clamp this all the way down, pull it up, and we can drop this onto one of our enemies. But anyway, that's enough of that. We can hit that button, open up the ramp, and we can now get inside. So this is what we saw just a second ago, but it's all lit up. We turn around, press that button, and close ourselves inside. So all these seats around the edge have nothing going on with them, but you could have them take manual control over the galley guns if you wanted to. Towards the front there, there is our survival kit, O2 H2 generator, our little seat up here, and of course access for our cargo container going towards the front. Turning around and looking up, this is all we get. And we can also climb up this ladder and go towards our cryopods over here. Yes, that's all that is in here. We've got a nice little walkway right here with some great use of our corner blocks and armored plates making out this railing. Makes it so you don't have to use the DLC pack to make the railings and also saves it if you don't actually own the DLC pack. But yes, we now come all around and drop down. Press this button, open this up once again. There we go. 
We'll just leave the warhead hanging right there, I'm sure that'll be fine. And now we can come all the way around towards the front. So all the way around, we now just grab hold of this ladder, come all the way up. And now we're standing up here where we can easily access our fighter cockpit to get inside. So bring up the HUD, this is what we get. Now I'll mention right now that the HUD only had a singular item on here, so I added a few more stuff on here to flesh it out and to show you what this thing is fully capable of. So we'll start with number 3 and number 4 which is for our Gatling guns at the front and our rocket launchers on our wings. There we go. Number 2 is for our ramp at the back just to simply open and close it from the fighter cockpit. Number 6 and number 7 is for our pistons and that's going to be for our landing gear on the side there to lift it up and down. And of course for our cargo lift at the back there to lift that up and down. And then number 1 is going to be the best part of all of this. Now I'm going to undo the parking brake, lift this thing up. In fact we're going to put the landing gear down for the moment because it activates. We're going to press number 1. That's going to undo the merge block and fold our back all the way forwards. Connect the two merge blocks at the top there. And now we can fly this thing around. So it is a completely vanilla vector thrust system. Be very well done. Just retract them all the way back in. Fly this thing around. And if we were to get close to the ground, then we just go and fold that all the way back. As you can see, we do have a sensor block on here. And if we get a certain distance towards the ground, they'll activate. There we go. And the pistons will automatically deploy and put our landing legs down to the ground. A very nifty system. Come all the way back up. I'll go and pull them back. I'll bring the free camera and we'll get a better look at that transformation process. So all the way over to here. That'll do just nicely. We're going to press number one. And there we go. We do sort of fold down with the ground as we lose that thrust keeping us off the ground. But it does settle down a little bit. There we go. And if we were to transform that all the way back, we'll look at it from here. There we go. So I'll just tilt this all the way back and lift it up a bit more. And we'll do it one more time because it is very nifty. And yes, we'll get a better view from underneath. In fact, we'll just come like so. That should do quite nicely. I'll try and keep the camera in a decent enough position. And we'll do it one more time. And there we go. It just snaps all the way up. Once that connects, the thrusters activate. And we can just fly this thing around. So yes, as for flying this thing around, this is what we get. We've got some nice speed thanks to all of those atmospheric thrusters at the back there. It does feel rather chunky to fly around, but it does suit this size of ship. I mean, to a stop, we are a little bit slower, and we do just about have the gyroscope control to do a 180 and boost forwards to stop ourselves a bit quicker. There we go with that, we're now going to stop a lot faster. And that'll do for the moment. If we were to move left and move right, we are quite slow with that. Moving up with only the front thrusters, that is all we're getting. And of course moving down we're going to be a lot quicker, but that's just because we are on planet Pertam. If I was to fold the wings all the way back, or fold the thrusters all the way back, and start to move up once again, once it's all done. There we go. We now got one hell of a lot more speed, and that is a lot safer to fly around on Pertam. Yeah, she's moving forward with our wings folded like that. That is all we get. We are extremely slow, so we will not be able to fly very quickly like so. But we will eventually get to 100 beats per second in this lifetime. There we go. We just fold that one more time. It's such a well done system for this. Is it really safe? I haven't had any issues with this whatsoever, even while flying around, doing a 180, doing dangerous stuff. It seems to be very, very solid. Yes, just wiggling my mouse around. This is all we get. As you can see, there's one hell of a lot of weight on here and it is dragging behind where my mouse is going. But like I said earlier, it suits this size of ship, because it is meant to be a big, heavy drop ship. Carry a lot of stuff along. And, well, you can always make this into a bomber with that rear magnetic plate. Fly along here. We now press that. We can drop our warhead all the way down to the ground. And... There we go. Anyway, that is pretty much it for the GBH drop ship has to offer. It's a fantastic vanilla-only Vector Thrust ship, which I highly recommend you download and play around, because it is a very well done system, very safe, and very impressive. So as per usual, there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. I highly recommend you do. And we'll finish this off the only way I know how, 
Naisu slam this into the ground at maximum speed. Oh, there's a nice little jutting out part. Just about miss it. And we hit the ground. We left a nice little hole. Can we reverse this thing out? Yes, we can. And it looks like we just damaged a couple blocks at the front there. So there we go. It's slightly crash proof. Anyway, thank you all for watching. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.